Good morning. Um, this week in the Missouri House was a pretty emotional week in committees. Uh, we saw kind of our first uh, run at the anti-LGBT bills that the Republican majority is pushing. Um, there are 15 bills filed so far. We're actually the second most in the country. Uh, so this, this week in committee we had an attack on marriage bill. Um, and then yesterday we had um, a pretty uh, upsetting hearing uh, dealing with trans youth. Um, had lots of kids here to testify. And so you know, we just want to say for this week, you know, the Democratic caucus is here to stand with the LGBT community and do what we can to stop this uh, needless attack on, on this community. But we're happy to take any questions y'all have about the week. When uh, the MEC report on Governor Brighton's came out, did you read it and say, wow, he's totally exonerated? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> um, I find it hard to understand how the former governor can equate a large fine to that amount to being exonerated. Um, MEC is not going to give you a fine to that size if you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, so that was really an interesting uh, take that he presented. Does your party have any kind of consensus on what they want to do with the regulation or the um, outlawing of video game terminals? Um, so we have had lots of discussion in our caucus about the video gaming terminals. Uh, we have some folks who are completely against them, some who are voting in favor. I would say that largely um, we have concerns. There, you will see amendments from our caucus to try to make it better. We've got lots of, uh, I will be filing an amendment to take it to a vote of the people. Um, I am looking at this as the largest expansion of gaming that, that we've seen in, in our state. So um, a vote of the people seems like a, a great direction to go. But you know, right now our caucus, we do not have a position and uh, we're interested to see how the debate plays out and what amendments are taken, if any, to see where we stand on it. Have you gotten any support from the other side regarding the statewide vote? Um, we really haven't gotten much movement on that. I know it was a discussion in committee. Uh, you will see some amendments uh, offered on the floor that were discussed in committee that uh, seem favorable to the bill sponsor, um, but no, we have not gotten much feedback on that. What do you think the next step should be as far as looking at the situation with the murder and businesses? Yeah, well, I will say that I'm really appreciative that the Speaker and uh, Chairman Ross are um, having these hearings and moving it in this direction. Um, I've sat in in the first two. Um, I left about halfway through yesterday. Yesterday was a very lengthy hearing. Um, so I, I think that we need to continue down this path of asking the department what happened. Um, we also discussed a lot yesterday um, where some of the answers that we were given from the department they could not answer were deferring to the Office of Administration. So I did mention yesterday I would love to have them come in the room and we could hear from them. I would also like to really hear from those impacted by, by the chaos that is ensuing around the medical marijuana licensing. I want to hear from those who applied, who got denied, uh, people who are representing clients who are currently um, you know, appealing. I think we have a long way to go in this discussion, um, but I am really happy that we're having it um, because what's what's going on is obviously not uh, not keeping folks happy and not necessarily uh, with what the voters were asking for. And so I um, just again I'm thankful that the speaker is allowing this to happen. What are your thoughts on the majority of the leaders' bill to give power to the chamber to investigate and possibly even have penalties for? presenting false information to the legislature. There wasn't a lot of discussion in that after you presented in the committee. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I will tell you, we haven't had a group discussion about this yet. Um, it kind of uh, came out of nowhere very quickly. Um, it is an interesting discussion, especially when we've seen the the new witness forms that folks have to sign. I can tell you that there are lots of folks in the caucus who have some reservations about that move. ACLU has sent in a letter to the speaker and to the clerk saying that they did not agree with, with the, the new forms. And then to see the majority floor leader's bill move quickly after that, while we're also having this investigation over here in government over oversight. Um, I am eager to see if there is any crossover there, uh, but specifically to the bill, I can honestly say I have not read it yet and I haven't had a discussion with the floor leader, so I don't want to speak to the specifics of it. I don't know if Representative, if you have anything else. Do you know what the gen what was the reason for that as you understand it for implementing that? The witness forms? Yeah. Um, so we've heard some mixed things about that, so when we, we first were notified of the forms, we were told that this is how it's always been. and. Uh, that they were just clarifying language on the forms themselves, but there were actually no rules changes or anything of that nature. Um, but then we've heard counter from organizations like ACLU and some of our members that are in disagreement with that interpretation. Um, so we were just told that it was for further clarification. Okay, thank you guys for your time. Have a great weekend.